Hello, Slice of Dicers. This is Brian with a double unboxing for you today. A double Cold Steel unboxing and one that I am super, super excited about. Especially about this one. I honestly kind of forgot that I ordered this one. But I'm glad that I did because it does look pretty cool in the pictures and stuff. And I'm eager to see what it's like. We have the Cold Steel 4MAX Scout and the Cold Steel Kir Folding Kiridashi. Really excited to uh, show these to you guys. I, I can't wait to get my hands on this one. Uh, where did I get these from? WhiteMountainKnives.com. If you go there, use the code SDWMK at checkout. You get 10% off of anything, not just the stuff I show in the videos, anything you want. Thank you very much to them for getting stuff out to me so fast. I do very much appreciate it. Uh, we are going to start out with the folding Kiridashi because I do have to tease you a little bit and have a little bit to talk about with the Formax Scout. So um, it, this is this is hurting me as much as it's hurting you. I, I really, I really want to open this first, but we're going to do this one first. So we're going to put it back here. And you have to use both hands to move that box. Folding Kiridashi. Uh, nobody's really talked about this, but I just saw it pop up in the new models and stuff. And I thought, yeah, well, I want to try it out. It looks pretty neat. And what do we have to use to open our cold steels? Of course, another cold steel. And what better one than American Law Man? You, we got to bring it out. Haven't had it out in a long time. Got that little sticker on there. I always forget that little sticker there. I can't even see what I'm doing. I'm a great unboxer. There we go. Their boxes are, the, the printing on them is very cool, but other than that, they're not super impressive, but that's fine. A lot of people don't give a crap about the boxes. I give half a crap about the boxes, but these are a nice little bit of bubble wrap. Sorry, my computer's going off here. Someone is messaging me on the, uh, on the Facebooks. I'm just going to mute that really quick so you guys don't have to listen to that. Live television, that's problem with unboxings. You can only do them once. As I suspected, it does have a Grivex. I think they call it Grivex. Is it Grivex in this one, or do they just call it FRN? Let me look. I'm look just reinforced nylon is what they call it in this one. I'm looking on the Cold Steel website to get some stats. Cause like I said, this is the first time I've seen this. Man, that feels really smooth and nice, but Grivex pocket clip. We'll see how that holds up. I don't know how that's going to go, but we'll put it through its paces and see. It is a tougher material than you think it is. Oh, I like that little Warncliffe blade, though. I do really like that. And wow, is it comfy. These are $43. Uh, White Mountain Knives is the only place I've seen that had them so far. They have them at $43. Does still have a triad lock and all that stuff. And it has, uh, what is it, 4034 SS Steel. I, I've never dealt with that before. We'll see how it does. It's also $43 on the Cold Steel side, so I don't know if they're price fixing or if uh, it's going to be a little bit cheaper other places. But uh, yeah, it's man, it's super comfortable in the hand for sure. Pretty small blade, a couple little stats, two and a half inch blade. We're not going to go through all the stats on everything. Six and a half inches long. What's the blade stock on it? I think, uh, yeah, they, they do they buy millimeters on their, uh, three millimeters on their site. So we'll just do it on here really quick. We have, we have the tools. Oh, pretty thin for a cold steel. 0.15. I almost wonder if that's wrong. No. Nope. Yeah, pretty thin blade stock. Yeah, what the hell? We'll do the thickness behind the edge. I usually save this for the full review, but it looks like it's pretty thick. Such a hard measurement to get correct. Yeah, third, 38, 39 thousandths behind the edge. Pretty thick behind the edge. We'll we'll try that again when we do the review. Don't take that as gospel. We will see, but feels like it could be. I don't think it's that thick, but feels like it could be. But yeah, really cool little Kiridashi worn cliffy blade. This is a pretty neat little knife. It is a backlock. It's a pretty easy to use backlock though. The spring tension isn't that crazy on it. We'll do a wait real quick, and then we'll move on to the main event. Come on, there we go. Yeah, 2.36 ounces, not too bad. Yeah, I don't know. The only thing I'm unsure about is that clip, and I know nothing about that steel, so I didn't even bother to look it up before I did the video on my little little steel app. I should do a video about the app sometimes. Really cool app you can get on your iPhone. It would be probably going to an Android, too, that just like, explains stuff about steels and stuff. It's uh, It's pretty handy. Yeah, pretty neat. I likes it. <clears throat> Don't know what it runs on or anything. Haven't taken it apart yet. We'll learn that in the full review, which there will definitely be a full review of this. Pretty neat. 
This one, very excited about though. I did not know this existed. I like how the camera shook when I set it down. Uh, <laughs> the, on my live show, I uh, about a month and a half ago, I mean, not that long ago, uh, four, four weeks ago, I asked, hey, this is my budget. I think I said 150 bucks around there. What should I get? And triple E EDC. And I gave away a uh, the winner. I was going to pick the best choice. The winner got a WorkSharp, uh, WorkSharp guided sharpening system. Um, and I said, you know, just give me your suggestions and whatever's the best suggestion, I'm, I'm going to go buy and I'm going to give you this WorkSharp thing. WorkSharp gave it to me and I passed it on, didn't even open the box, uh, triple, e EDC, triple E EDC, it's on, it's, he should have it any day now. Um, this wasn't out yet, but it was coming very, very soon. I did not know it existed. This is a budget version of the Formax Scout. I have always wanted a Formax. I think if you're going to own a big, ridiculous knife, it might as well be a cold steel. But a Formax is like 350 bucks, S35 VN, G10, titanium liners, all that stuff. This is, it says right here in the front, OS 10A with uh, Grivex scale, says right there in the front. It also says 10.2 ounces, which really feels about right, honestly. I thought that's got to be wrong, but just picking up the box. Yeah, that's probably correct. Um, but I'm really excited to get a 4Max. I've always wanted a big, ridiculous 4Max, but I didn't want to spend the money. So this is aimed exactly at me. Because I knew if I had a big, ridiculous 4Max, I'm not going to carry it very often. For 350 I don't want it just hanging around as a token knife. But for between, by the way, I, I've seen prices from 111 to 129 So for that price, yeah, I can just have one hanging around. That'd be fun. Bring it out and scare my neighbors. Holy crap, this thing is even bigger than I thought it was. I have never held a... Wow. I've never held a regular Formax, so I am being genuinely surprised. I've seen them, you know, a blade show and stuff, but I never picked one up. And, um... Wow, this is big. This is a big old knife. Let's see if that 10.2 is right. I do think it is. I thought for sure that had to be wrong. Because that's super heavy. But again, everybody's got to have one big token ridiculous knife in their collection. Yeah, 10.18. <laughs> it's every bit they said it was going to be. Uh, Grivex handles, which is, you know, fancy plastic. But, you know, they feel pretty good. I have to say, and I did, I don't, I normally do not watch videos um, of other people before I review a knife. Uh, but I did on this one. Uh, Jimmy Slash did one. Jimmy Slash is like the Formax expert. So I wanted to go see his. I'm going to link to that video down below. Um, really great video. He beat the snot out of one of these and it stood up to it. And then also I watched Andrew Demko's video on Cold Steel's own channel. Explained the Formax Scout. And he said, if you buy one of these, you're getting everything that you're getting from a regular Formax. Just the materials aren't as nice. And he said it's every bit as strong, every bit as everything as a regular Formax. It's just just cheaper materials. And um, just not as, as pretty. Uh, yeah, Grivex Backspacer as well. All right, let's get this sucker open. Let's see if I can flick it out first time. Yep, holy cow, that's a lot of knife. I love that cold steel flack. Why am I choking? Oh, this knife is so huge. I'm choking. I don't know why. I'm, that's just my reflex. It's just to go to the choke up position. It's extremely comfortable in the hand. It's extremely comfortable. The jimping is like not super aggressive. It's just about right. Man, this is this ain't this ain't half bad. Oh, it's so big and silly though. It's so big and silly. I love it. I love the silliness. And again, like I said, for 111 bucks, like I, I can I can afford to keep, you know, this around as a token silly knife. Couldn't afford to keep a $350 one around as a token silly knife, but this one I can. And it's OS 10A. I like to find stuff about OS 10. I don't know if it's the same thing. OS 10A, everybody compares it to like, you know, VG10-ish sort of thing. But Cold Steel does uh, cryo treat and all their stuff. They do, they do even a great job. Their, their OS 8 performs extremely well, so I'm not worried about it. Uh, a lot of people were mad that it's OS 10A. 
Uh, but, you know, for the price, and Cole Steele does a great job on it. And again, go watch Jimmy Slash's video. He pounded the snot out of one of these, and it still would just shave foam paper with no problem whatsoever. So not, not stressed about it at all. I think Aus 10A is going to be completely fine. This isn't a knife that I'm going to use every single day. But, man, it's so comfortable. I kind of wasn't expecting that. Kind of an interesting texture on the, uh, it's more it, on the Grivex. It's kind of, uh, well, Jimmy Slash said it too, and he's right. It's kind of like grip tape. It's kind of like uh, grip tape on a skateboard. That's probably not going to be awesome coming in out of my pocket, but uh, that's what's nice. You just take the pocket clip off and you sand that little spot. I did that on my Cold Steel Recon 1, and uh, it made a world of difference, and I'm probably going to wind up doing that on this too because I think this is one I'm going to keep around a while. I don't really like to modify knives unless I know I'm going to have them for a while, but I think I'll probably do that on this. Um, you just sand off the little spot where the clip lies. It is right hand, left hand, and the back lock's completely ambidextrous. I did see on the video, everybody asked what that hole's for, I did see on the Andrew Demko video about this, first time I saw him explain it, that uh, this, yeah, it did used to be on one of his other knives. Uh, this was a, you could put a pin through it to make sure it wouldn't close on you, uh, but now it is just kind of ornamental. It's not the same size as the old one was. You can stick a pin through it, though, to make sure it doesn't close on you, but um, it's not the same size as it was, and it really is just kind of a design aesthetic now. Um, wow, this is awesome. This is so big. Will it cut anything? What do I have here to try and cut? <clears throat> and we got this. Let's go through. It'll still cut, even though it's a big, thick sucker. How thick is it, you ask? Let me get out the calipers and see. Kind of, I'm kind of falling in love with this big, ridiculous, stupid thing already. You have a blade stock of, yeah, 0 0.19 inches. Handle thickness of 0 0.6725 inches. Well, let's get that right. 0 0.665 inches. As I said, weight of 10.2 ounces. They were right about that. Blade length, every single bit of four inches, and overall length. I don't want to do math, so we're going to go down here. Um, yeah, right, almost dead on 10 inches. This is a whole lot of knife. If you are buying knives uh, by the ounce, uh, this is the best value in the knife world. Yeah, wow. This is big. Let's just do some size comparisons really quick. And we'll bring out the Kiridashi again, too, if I can figure out where I put it. There it is. So this is Spyderco Paramilitary, too. Not a small knife. Way bigger. This is a uh, Hinder XM18. Definitely not a small knife. Mm-hmm. I don't think I have anything else that's any bigger than that that would be any more impressive. And we'll, we'll do the same thing with the Karadashi really quick. Flip that sucker out. And what else do we have here? Oh, we have the, I just reviewed it, so it's still sitting here. CRKT Pete. I'm going to give up on the Piet thing. I wanted to say Piet, but I, it probably is Pete. About almost exactly the same size as that. Wow, and I don't know what the price is in any of these when they're more widely available. Hmm, you can almost see a little battle to the death there with these two, because I bet the prices are going to be pretty similar. Yeah, um, bring the cold, bring the, the big giant Formax out. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna try and put this in my pocket and carry it around today. Uh, I just want to see how it is. I'm gonna try and put it in my pocket right now and just see. I'm sitting down, so I bet that is not going to be easy to do. Carry my Hinder Eclipse three inch today. I have people working on my house today, so I thought the Hinder would be impressive, but none of them asked to see my knife, so it was disappointing. Let's try and put this in my pocket. Yep, it goes in. Holy crap, I can get, actually get my hand in my pocket. I was not expecting that. I can get my hand past it. I'll bring out yield yield dickies. It does, it's definitely going to chew some pants up, though. That is faux show. Sure. I'll try it with the Kiridashi, too. And then I'll let you guys go, if you haven't already stopped watching. 
<laughs> this thing is so funny. It's going to be really hard to... It's a lot of pocket clip tension. It's going to be pretty hard to get in and out of these things. Yep. There we go. Very hard to do when you're not wearing them. When you're wearing them, there's more resistance. But yeah, I can... I can still get my hand in the pocket. Look at that. My hand's in the pocket next to a Formax. That's crazy. As you can see, um, yeah, it takes up a lot. These are huge pockets, by the way. These are Dickie's work pants. So these are really big pockets, but you can you can get your hand in there. I'm just wearing American Eagle jeans right now. I got my hand in just fine. Yep, that's that's not easy to take in and out. That pocket pocket clip's gonna have to get backed off or there's gonna have to be some sanding on there for absolutely sure but actually that's good it doesn't guillotine you it's got a nice little stop there you have that sometimes with cold steels huh other than 10.2 ounces and maybe it's not as bad to live with as i thought it would be and, and the fact that it, that's just gonna destroy your pockets so it was specifically designed to do that. Here's the Kiridashi. Much easier to get in and out. Not indiscreet, even though there's a small knife, but yeah, it's very lightweight and you can get your hand past and all that stuff. That one's fine. Isn't going to destroy your pockets, but yeah, there we have it. Two new cold steels. I know you guys love cold steels and so do I. I need to review more of them. I feel like I've been neglecting my Cold Steel fans for a while, but uh, this is awesome in a in a ridiculous way. So can't wait to do the full review. And I'm probably going to take my time with this one. Uh, this one may come out a little bit sooner. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.